Internal Revenue Service IRS tax news. Before toasting the new year, taxpayers should review this to-do list. Oh, great. I mean, the IRS is most likely going to remind us that taxes are like around the corner. And therefore, we may want to change our champagne selection from Don Perignon to some kind of cheap sparkling wine. Or possibly just like water in a plastic champagne glass that you blow bubbles into just before toasting so that you could pose for the the new year's photo what's that phil no i did not know champagne companies were at net zero greenhouse emissions how did that how did they do that i see the champagne companies captured carbon from the environment and then stored it in the champagne bottles lowering the company's carbon footprint yeah but phil I mean, they then sell the champagne bottles to people planning on opening them, exploding both the carbon and champagne all over the place while pretending they're holding on to their Johnson. Yeah, I know, Phil, that it's not the champagne company's fault that people do what, whatever they want with the bottle after they buy it. But, I mean, don't you think it's a little disingenuous for the champagne company to claim they're carbon neutral given the situation? I mean, honestly, why don't you ever listen to people who actually know what they're talking about and have done actual productive stuff? Like, oh, I don't know, Elon Musk, for example, with his whole electric cars and everything. Okay, okay, Phil, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I mentioned the Twitter Nazi. I'm just saying. Plus, calling him a Twitter Nazi seems a little bit extreme, doesn't it? Okay, okay, Phil. I no, no, I don't want you editing in another video of me on the can in my next YouTube vid. I get it. Let's just let's just change the subject with a joke. Give a man a fish and you'll feed him for a day. Unless maybe he doesn't like fish. Or like has some kind of terrible fish allergy. In which case, giving a man a fish could kill him. Mm hmm. Ah, poison, poison, tasty fish. But if you teach that same man who has like the fish allergy to fish, he can poison himself. Concentrate, concentrate. I want ah! Fugu! They're possibly saving you a lawsuit. God's sake, don't eat another bite. Oh, I couldn't possibly. Mr. Simpson, son, I shall be brunt. We have reason to believe you have eaten poison. I mean, for example, the current administration is working on a program teaching people how to catch and eat bats so as to avoid, you know, gain of function culpability. Poison? What, what should I do? What should I do? Tell me quick. Oh, no need to panic. There's a map to the hospital on the back of the menu. IRS Tax Tip 2022-191, December 15, 2022. Whether they plan to stay up to greet the new year or go to bed early, taxpayers can get ready for 2023 by reviewing these common end-of-year tasks. People can always visit IRS Get Ready page. There's a link to that here for info on filing their tax return. Here are a few things they should keep on their radar. Check individual taxpayer identification number. There's a link to that here. The IRS issues ITINs, I-T-I-N-S, ITINs to people who are required to have a U.S. taxpayer identification number but who don't have and are not eligible to obtain a social security number. So clearly, to the IRS, to the government, you are a number. You got to have your number or else the IRS doesn't know who you are. So if your number has expired, whatever that may be, then you're going to have to update it. So if the I-10 was not included on a federal tax return at least once for tax years 2019, 2020, and 2021, the I-10 will expire on December 31st, 2022. Individuals only need to renew an I-10 if it has expired and is needed on a federal tax return. Find information about retirement plans. IRS.gov, 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 V for victory over taxes. That has a uh, end of year tax information about retirement plans. So you can check that out. So that's one of the kind of last minute tax planning oftentimes that you can kind of do. In other words, if you have a 401k plan, for example, you might want to try to maximize what you can put into the 401k plan because uh, by the end of the year, 
then you may not be able to put into a 401k plan. But some other uh, options possibly, if you could still put money into like an IRA, for example, that's one of the last minute kind of things that you might be able to do and get an idea of how much you could put in by actually filling out the tax return. And the software will often help you out to see whether or not you might be able to put more money in for the IRA. So it can be quite useful uh, as well when you're doing this retirement planning kind of situation and thinking if you could put money into a retirement plan, which is one of the biggest kind of benefits that you can get oftentimes uh, to, to see if you can get the cash flow in order to do it. Because one of the restrictions, of course, is that you need the money to put it into the retirement plan in order to do so to get any kind of tax benefit generally from it. In any case, these include resources for individuals about retirement planning, contributions, and withdrawals. We got contribution, uh, contribute salary deferral. Taxpayers can make a salary deferral to a retirement plan. This helps maximize the tax credit available for eligible contributions. There's a link to that here. Taxpayers should make sure their total salary deferral contributes uh, contributions do not exceed 20,500 limit for 2022. So you know, obviously, when you're thinking about putting money into these into a type of plan, one of the benefits oftentimes of a 401k plan, for example, is you might be able to put more money into it, although you, you typically would have to do that basically before uh, the end of the year. And of course, you've got that kind of cash flow type of situation. When you're putting money into, say, an IRA, you are far more limited to how much money that you can put into an IRA. But it's that last minute time of tax planning thing that you have usually until you file the tax return or April 15th, not including the extensions to kind of figure out if you can put any more money into something like that. Some kind of retirement plans, by the way, <clears throat> might have a, an extended time period for like, like a sole proprietorship. Uh, if you're, if you have an IRA, if you have a, a retirement plan, that's like a, a SEP plan, for example, then you, you might be able to put money in for tax year 2022 after uh, December. So, but those are some of the things you want to look at. What availability do you have for the retirement plan? Do you have to put the money in before the end of the year? And then how much can you put in, in terms of the limits, how high it, you can go, as well as of course your budget, how, how much can you put in? And then, and then if you can have some options to plan, after you actually after the year closes that's a great tool because then you can actually do your taxes and figure out how much uh, money uh, you could still possibly put in at that point in time which could be beneficial but you need the cash flow to do it so donate to charity taxpayers must make any donation to a tax exempt organization they want to deduct on their 2022 return by december 31st so remember that we're basically on a cash flow basis for the most part for taxes so if you want to have a deduction, usually it has to be made in the year that, uh, that, that you have to give the money in that year, in this case, 2022. So you're running up to the deadline if you want to have some of these deductions. Now, obviously there's limitations to that. If you try to prepay stuff and whatnot, the IRS is going to be skeptical of that. So if you try to take advantage of the cash flow kind of system by prepaying a bunch of stuff, but for this case, charity, if you want to get a charitable deduction, you, didn't, you generally have to do that before the end of the year. So most charitable, charitable cash donations qualify for the deduction. However, there are some exceptions. There's a link to that here. Cash contributions include those made by check, credit card, or debit card, as well as unreimbursed out-of-pocket expenses in connection with a volunteer services to a qualified charitable organization. And then you've got the IRA, IRA owners age 70 and a half or over have the option to transfer up to 100,000 to charity tax-free each year. So notice if, if you're over uh, the, the threshold where you have to basically be, be pulling money out of your IRA or your retirement plan, then you're in a situation where the IRS is forcing you to take the money out. Why are they forcing you to take the money out in like a required distribution? because they want to they want to get the tax on it at that point because you got the deferral the tax benefit when you put the money into the retirement plan so then the question is well if i don't actually need the money right now uh it would would it be more beneficial for me to give that money possibly to charity and maybe have it go a little bit further than it than it otherwise would and then i can give the money to people that you know might not might use it to what I want it to do, right? Use it a bit more accurately or 
efficiently. So these transfers, known as Qualified Charitable Distributions, or QCDs, offer eligible older Americans a great way to give to charity before the end of the year. For those who are at least 72, OCDs count toward the IRA owner's required minimum distribution for the year. So get banked and set up direct deposit. Direct deposit, there's a link to that here, gives taxpayers access to their refund faster than a paper check. So if you're expecting and relying on that, that uh, refund and you want it as soon as possible, then you typically want to file an electronic tax return and you want to set up your, your direct deposit in information for it. So those without a bank account can learn how to open an account at an FDIC insured bank. There's a link to that here. Or through the National Credit Union Locator tool. There's a link to that here. Veterans should see the Veterans Benefit Banking Program. There's a link to that here for access to financial services at a participating banks. Connect with the IRS. Taxpayers can use social media. Yeah. The IRS is on the social media thing all over the place these days. They're super popular. So you could get the latest tax and filing tips for the IRS. Honestly, I just look at the news personally. I, I, if anybody's getting extra value from like the Twitter account from the IRS or something like that, or from uh, face messages, I would be interested to see you know what added value they're, they're getting from that. I'm kind of curious to know, or if that's just an easy way to, to get the, the same information because I would think Twitter is a tool for getting something faster than you otherwise would but I would think the organization itself uh, is not going to start giving leaking information faster you would have to follow people within the IRS possibly for that so I would think you wouldn't get a whole lot of added information from like a Twitter Facebook maybe it's just easier to get your news feed and Facebook I hear Facebook might be turning off their news feed because their Congress is is after them or something uh, and then I, I, Instagram, I don't know what added information you would get from Instagram. I don't know. So I, I don't really see the added value, but it might be worth following them there. And I'm curious to know if anybody has any ideas on, on the benefits they're getting from that over and above the, the just the news is to your email or something. But the IRR shares information on things like tax changes, scam alerts, initiatives, tax products, and taxpayer services. These social media tools are available in different languages, uh, including English, Spanish, and American Sign Language. Think about tax refunds. The fastest way taxpayers can get a tax refund is by filing electronically, choosing direct deposit, but no one should ever plan to get a refund by a certain date. So they say like 21 days is the average or something, but it's just an average. So you don't want to go out and buy that champagne bottle or whatever, thinking that you're going to get uh, the tax refund before you get the tax refund. Wait till it's in your hand if you can, unless you have emergency situations because stuff can happen. It's the IRS. They, they have sticky fingers sometimes on the refunds. So this is especially true for those who want to use their refund to make major purchases or buy or pay bills. So there's a link to some of that stuff if you want to do some of your planning here, which is how you obviously should spend your new year and and uh, in last minute planning, because if you want to do anything that's going to have an impact on your taxes, cash flow basis, you got to do it before the end of the year oftentimes. So uh, it might be worthwhile to check out any last minute stuff you can look into.